Hello, dear friends in Christ. We uh, have come now to this final week of Advent, this fourth week of Advent. Um, and we're approaching these final days before the, we celebrate this great feast of the Nativity of Christ. Um, I want to share with you a passage from Galatians uh, chapter 4 and meditate on uh, this passage with us uh, today. When the time had fully come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And there's, there's a lot uh, that we could uh, unpack in these few verses. There's, there's a lot that's contained there. And I, I just want to begin with that first line, when the, full, when the time had fully come. Uh, another translation is in the fullness of time. And what does that mean? What does it mean that time is fulfilled? Or what does the fullness of time mean? There's, a, there's another passage in the scriptures that we're familiar with that talks about time, huh? from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Everything has a season, and we know it. There, there's a, there's a, a time to be born and a time to die and a time to plant and a time to pluck up what was planted. Uh, there's a time for, for every purpose under heaven. But right after uh, that, that litany of listing uh, the time for various things, uh, there's this line. God has put eternity into the human mind. God has put eternity into the human mind. So even though we, we live in time, there's something that is oriented towards the eternal. That God has put eternity into our, 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 our hearts and our minds. And the fullness of time that's, that Paul's talking about in his letter to the Galatians has something to do with the, this relationship between eternity and time. Uh, the fullness of time is, in fact, that time in which eternity enters into time. To reach the fullness of time, uh, St. John Paul II says, means to reach the end of time and to transcend the limits in order to find the fulfillment of time in the eternity of God. And what we need to, to remember and believe is that this eternity that enters into time is not some empty, impersonal, abstract force or energy, that God the fullness of time. The fullness of time is the one who is eternal. Uh, and so scripture says to us that time is fulfilled by the very fact that God in, in the incarnation comes down into human history. God sent his son, this passage says, uh, born of a woman. It, that eternity isn't some kind of impersonal reality, but eternity is God who is personal, who is relational. As this passage says, he's, he's Abba. He's a father who sends his eternal son. There's a relationship going on here. You know, last week we, we, we reflected on, on th this experience that we have in our souls, this infinite longing that, that, that we're created for the eternal one. And that, that's why we long. That's why our lives uh, are, seem unfulfilled. Why everything besides God himself doesn't seem to satisfy us. Our hearts are restless and lost in thee, the psalmist says in Psalm 62. Everyone is searching for you. Uh, everyone is searching for the Lord, longing for this happiness. We're searching for the eternal one. And it's in Christianity alone that it's just not us who search. Every human being is searching and longing. But it's God who's, who reveals himself as a God who searches for us. He's longing for us more than we long for him. You know, the parable of the lost sheep, we're familiar with that story in which the shepherd goes out and searches for the, the one who's lost, the one, the one sheep that's lost, so that he might return him to the fold. And that's our Heavenly Father. He searches for us. He goes out and searching, searching for us. And this is what's at the heart 
of the meaning of in incarnation that God comes to us. He goes out to us. And, and Paul's letter to the Ephesians speaks also about the fullness of time and the purpose for which God goes out to us, which is uh, to unite us in him, to unite us with him. You know, as we read and reflect on the Christmas uh, narrative, the Christmas stories, we, we come across this line in Luke's gospel that when Jesus was ready to be born, uh, Mary and Joseph were, were looking for a place uh, for his birth. And he had to be born in a stable because there was no room in the inn, the scriptures tell us. Now th think about that. The Lord of the universe, the eternal one who's coming to us, who wants to draw so close to us that he unites his divinity with our humanity. In the womb of Mary, there's no room for him. There's no room for him at the end. You know, Advent, as we've been reflecting uh, upon over these weeks, is, means uh, the coming, the arrival. The Lord is coming. Our Father is coming to us in the sending of his Son. And he so desires to make his home in us, to fill that infinite longing of our hearts with himself, who is, who is love. And uh, so let's, in faith, uh, pray uh, that, that God would give us the grace to, to uh, make room in our hearts, to find space in our hearts to welcome uh, his presence, his love, uh, as he comes to us. Um, so let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, we thank you, uh, God, that you are a Father um, who desires to have a relationship with us as with a son or with a daughter. We thank you, Father, that you have longed for us, that you have searched for us, that you have gone out to us, that you've come to us. Lord, we pray that you would, would open our hearts uh, by the power of your, your Holy Spirit, that you would give us that grace uh, of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we might uh, recognize you as Father, receive you as Father, cry out to you as Father. Uh, Lord, help us in these days of feasting and celebration to enter more deeply into the mystery of your love for us, to your coming to us in your Son, uh, into the relationship that you desire for us. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas.